there is a certain feature, a bone, a muscle, that if you lack, it can destroy a bunch of your functional and side profiles. And that's your chin, it can take even people who are considered PSL slayers and completely flatten their looks. From these side profiles, we can see an even the frontal profile through too tall or too short of a chin height. In today's video, we will learn a new perspective when it comes to chin recession, and something I never talked about before, the chin muscle itself. This video, like many others, will be split into two main parts, the chin recession and chin muscle. If you want to support the channel and get your face evaluated by me with personalized look max and advice, link will be down in the description. If you want to read more about topics like these, you can check out my blog at nearfacerating.com. Without further ado, let's get this video started. Chin projection is brutal, it can hardly be changed, it may be impossible without surgery. Study shows that the chin massively changes your levels of attractiveness. Any major deviation from the ideal, even a single millimeter, alters the perceived attractiveness. This photo shows size perfectly aligned with the E-line. Basically, the middle profile was always found to be the most attractive. An orthognatic profile, also called a straight-jawed profile, was absolutely always the most attractive in rank, and it symbolizes ideal development. These profiles are simply put decided by the SNA and SMB angle. Ideal being about 80 to 84 degrees for the SNA, anything below or over that means your maxilla is too anteriorly or posteriorly positioned. Or to connect it to the next part, below 80 to 79 degrees the maxilla is too retrognatic, over 84 to 85 degrees is too prognatic. SNB angle is pretty similar to the SNA but for the mandible, it assesses the anterior posterior position of the mandible. A is clearly an ideal orthognatic profile, B and C are respectively slightly and severely retrognatic profiles, sadly common these days, and D is prognatic. So what is the cause of this flaw? This common thing, also known as recession, is a literal condition, it is believed that it can be genetic or by childhood habits, mainly be in mouth breathing. But in more serious cases, it can be caused by different syndromes that create a blockage of the airways. Pierre Robin syndrome, for example, one side of the lower face not developing properly, for example, hemifacial microsomia. Your mentalist muscle, otherwise known as your chin muscle, affects the how many of your lower third or mouth area. Too pudgy or thick of a mentalist muscle can make your chin look less sharp and thus less attractive. For example, comparing these two, yes, their chin projection is different too. But that's not the point. Look at the pudginess of Leo's chin muscle from the side view. Chico has a perfect balance for his mentalist muscle all throughout. And it's not too pudgy, allowing his chin to look sharp from the front and giving presence to his chin bone. A trait that I considered even more important to how large and pudgy your chin muscle is would be your mentalist muscle insertion. A good mentalist muscle insertion would be that the insertion point is ideally as close as the lower lip as possible, if not directly below it. Having an insertion point relatively far from your lower lip can make you look primitive and unattractive. For example, the black arrow points to the insertion point. The red part shows the distance between the lower lip and the insertion point. You can tell how huge that is, like I said, having a low mentalist muscle insertion make you look unattractive. An ideal perfect mentalist muscle insertion point would be like this. The distance is short, resulting in a more aesthetically pleasing look. Along with your insertion point, there is also the mental labial fold. A mental labial fold is a groove, line, slash crease where your mentalist muscle insertion point lies. Different people's mental labial fold have different depths. The deeper the fold, the more prominent the line, and therefore the more unattractive. Most people have an invisible, non-existent, or extremely shallow mental labia fold. It can be more prominent with age due to depleting fat pad stores in your face. How deep or prominent your mental labia fold is, is genetics. However, people can often develop mental labia folds, deeper mental labia folds, whenever they get surgery on their chin. Genioplasty or chin implants. If you want to avoid deepening or developing a mental labia fold when having surgery done on your chin, I would suggest going for a chin shield surgery. It's the exact same method as a conventional genioplasty, except modified to allow for more projection, increase while lowering the risk of deepening the mental labia fold. But what do you guys think about all of this? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. That's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. A like and subscribe will be highly appreciated. And like usual, catch you guys in the next one.